It is a cliché to say video games have evolved rapidly. However, if such a cliché exists, it is because it is an unescapable fact. From 4 bits, jumping into 8, running in 16, dimensioning in 32 and 64, diving into 128, and beyond. Alongside the graphical evolution, aspects such as gameplay and narrative have developed to the point that in the entertainment world, video games are a force to be reckoned with. They are also a very unique, empathic tool. Contrary to movies or books, video games need active involvement of the player. Every jump, every strike, every decision, every victory, every defeat. Every moment of the game is shared by the player and the characters they play as. It is not just Mario defeating Bowser and saving Peach, much less Cloud finally defeating his past in Sephiroth, or Chris and Jill surviving the horrors of the Spencer Mansion. The player is simultaneously actor and spectator of these moments, possessing an empathic bond with the characters and the situations they deal with. Yes, you, dear Villa, helped heroes to win or villains to lose by playing as them and with them. Due to this unique perspective, games can approach a variety of complex topics like war, betrayal, loss, life, death, and many others through a more personal perspective. In this first video on a series in development about empathic games, I will present on how early video games' lack of narrative was not a bug, but a feature, given the limitations at the time, and how some rudimentary empathy was built within such limitations. Firstly, what is empathy? As defined by the dictionary, it is the ability to imagine yourself in the place of another person, the comprehension of feelings, wishes, ideas, and actions of another, any act of emotional involvement in relation to a person, a group, and a culture, capacity to interpret nonverbal communication patterns, the feeling that external objects provoke in a person. The same line of thinking, empathic games are, in a nutshell, Games that highlight narrative and gameplay elements to engage users to understand how it is to be in the place of another person, or even creature, through whatever means the game has available. Be it in a linear and traditional fashion as expected of a three-act structure, or throwing these conventions out of the window in favor of experiences more introspective, abstract, non-linear, or simply leaving everything up to player interpretation, every game has an empathic element. Some are more evident than others depending on the game's needs, objectives of the game design, and developer's goals. Academics often highlight that the reason games are empathical machines, it is due to the narrative that players experience on them. I've been playing games for a very long time, since the NES actually, and I would argue that the creation of such empathy between player and game has existed for a very long time. It is not uncommon when discussing games and narratives that we often tend to focus on the most impactful moments, the rising tension and climax which is natural of every good story. However, for video games, the role of the narrative often used to be a lot more utilitarian than we are used to. I immediately remember the famous quote from John Carmack, the creator of Doom, Quake, and many other renowned games. Story in a game is like story in a porn movie. It is expected to be there, but it is not that important. While a somewhat controversial take, it is not completely without reason. Many games, both video games and board games, have, if not fragments of a story, the complete lack of it, and they are worldwidely known. Merely the goal of winning against other players, or if victory is not possible, to not lose, is enough to motivate the learning and development of game strategy. The role of the narrative in the first two video game generations was primarily functional, to give the player a role and objectives in the context of the game. As well, it served an aesthetic function, to inform what types of visuals the game should have, and how would players interpret those pixels in their imagination. 
Touch philosophy was not so different in the arcades. It could be argued that the sensation of being transported into the game's universe was augmented by the decorations in the cabins, together with electronic lights and sounds filling the atmosphere of other cabins and being occasionally broken by the screams and grunts of other players around you. Due to the technical limitations at the time, developers did not have the computational resources needed to build elaborate stories. The focus had to primarily be in objectives that are visually and immediately clear and attractive. If any game had any story of any sort, this role was literally delegated to the manual. Wow, remember when video games had manuals and they had the story in them? Tips, artwork, and a space for notes, and you kind of felt that not only you got the game, but also you got a little book with the game, which was kind of cool. Oh. Oh no, am I that old? Anywho, besides the manual, game developers had to be creative by necessity in how to visually communicate in an efficient way with players, be it in consoles or in arcades. Game demos and transparent sheets overlaid on the screen were used to give the maximum amount of information to players with the available means. Empathy from a traditional narrative point of view did not exist, except on a mechanical level. If there are no game characters, then you, the player, is the main character of the game. It doesn't matter if you are piloting cars, planes, spaceships, bars, vaguely humanoid figures, or Pac-Man. The Bond video game and player was rudimentary, but it surprisingly worked. The motivation of simply wanting to win is enough to make the simple push of a button something more. High score, best time, break your own limits. Alongside this mechanical bond with the game, players also build connections with other players via gaming magazines and newspapers with leaderboards and challenges. Some of these were also defined by the very young game developers. Games like Sword Quest for the Atari 2600 had a campaign to see which players could win $50,000 in prizes. By solving puzzles alongside the comic book that accompanied the game, players could win a collection of prizes decorated in gold, silver, jade, and precious stone, each game being associated with one of the four elements of the universe. Too bad this campaign never concluded because... Anyone who accompanies the video game industry history for a very long time knows what happens in 83. The Great Video Game Crisis. While it is outside the scope of this video, everything you need to know is that a series of bad decisions led the great companies at the time to completely mass saturation of the market alongside the lack of quality control created the perfect storm. Video games were not cheap before, but they sold. Now they were really not selling. Alongside these problems, PCs were getting cheaper by this time. The marketing at the time painted PCs as a more useful tool for the education of your children and, I don't know, do taxes? How the hell did we not make this easier? In this day and age is beyond me. All of these factors combined led the video game industry on the verge of destruction. Nothing more than a very expensive and useless toy. And by treating them as such, an obscure Japanese company saw in the midst of chaos an opportunity to rise to the occasion. Oh, how could I do all of this without introducing myself? Hello, you can call me Scripps. Vinny is also fine. This video is being produced in an extra official capacity for the Data Beyond Life Project, or DAVI. If the acronym doesn't make sense, it is because it is in Portuguese. It is a group dedicated in the exploration of sensitive questions regarding the postmodern digital legacy and also in how to approach sensitive topics in an era permeated by technology. If you want to know more, the link is in the description. If you like what you've seen so far, please tell me what else could be cool to discuss later in the comments below. Your likes and subscription are greatly appreciated. Until next video, take care.